That is how democracies are developed. You bow to the will of the people. You listen to the people when they march in the streets. And you, and you talk to them. You don't lock them up. You don't charge them with treason. You don't lock them up for 45 days and say they have no right to dissent. Well, and, yes. But where do we draw the line? Because yeah. you, just, you just said something very key. You mm. said that we have the right mm. to say whatever it is mm -hmm. we want. Mm -hmm. I disagree with mm -hmm. you. I believe that there are certain things that as citizens of this nation, we shouldn't utter. Like what? And I believe that, so calling for the segregation of the country, yes, um, yes is a fundamental yes. human rights. The, P, the uh, um, IPOP group, the IMN, yes. yes, they can call that they want yes. their referendum. The yes. Afeniferi group has also called for right. that. However, when you start to preach violence against... No, 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 no. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I made that point very clear. Yeah. Violence or the expression of violence is not acceptable. I do not subscribe to that. In my view, as far as I'm aware, IPOP has never said, let us pick up guns and secede. Now, and that's the distinction. Outside of that, mm. you have the right in a democratic setting to say anything you like about your government. They work for us. But to say, I will kill, I will use arms, I will you know, indulge in insurrection, that is a different but thing. You agree That's words, a criminal offense. But you agree words matter. Yes. So when IPOP refers, or some of the people yes. who believe, who are part of the yes. um, IPOP movement, mm. refer to Nigeria as a zoo, Let's look at the pre-genocidal time in Rwanda when the <laughs> Hutus were referring to the Tutsis as, yes. co as cockroaches. Right. When it was time to kill them, it became so much easier because they saw look. them as cockroaches. So when they make remarks like this... I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, let, let, uh, let, yeah. let me finish. What? When they make remarks yes. like this, that Nigeria is a zoo, mm. that our leaders are animals, that Nigerians mm. are not human beings, don't you believe that they should be able to guide it's their very, utterances? It's very, very important for you to appreciate this fact. And I'll tell you this just once, okay? And I'm not justifying those expressions. I am a Nigerian. I do not believe that Nigeria is a zoo. And neither do I agree with that kind of language to be spoken about my people. But I also recognize the fact that people that have been hurt, wounded, marginalized, killed, slaughtered like flies, have had their children butchered before their very eyes, and so on and so forth, are bound to indulge in that sort of language. You go to, the, and I know you, you know the UK very well, go to any country in Western Europe or in America, listen to the way that some people that feel aggrieved refer to their governments. They say all sorts of things. It's a package. It's what you call free speech. Now, what you mustn't tolerate or accept is the idea of transiting from that, transiting from that to violence and say, I am getting up to you know, lead an armed insurrection or so. That's where you draw the line. But you do see the correlation. I, I, no, no, no. I it don't. starts from I, I, speech no, 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 before I don't, you... I don't, I don't see the correlation, and I'll tell you why. Okay. You see, we, we are so used to this all-powerful state. And, I, I, you know, I have been in government. I know, and you are a product, I'm sorry to say this, <laughs> of the system as well. We all are. Many of us are. But the problem is this, that Nigerian governments are always very nervous when people get up and say what they want to say. And they begin to act in an irrational way. Now, let me put this to you. What has happened in this country is that there has been abuse of power. And it's not just the Buhari government. It has happened over a period of time. And, you know, I, I, I'm in the, AP, the PDP, and um, the PDP was in power for 16 years. Throughout that period, on occasions, there were abuses of power. And what you need to do is understand that that is unacceptable. To say because I am in had a few demonstrations because you abuse power by locking up their leader against court orders and you expect them to sit at home and not demonstrate at all, you're joking. It doesn't work like that. To say but. that IPOP <laughs> doesn't have the right to exist, you're joking. And then you look at the processes that they adopt. That is also an abuse of power. You go to court as a government and you say, I don't like uh, Osasu's show and I don't like her face or I don't like AIT and it's happened to AIT too. You go to court. And you go and get a court order ex parte without the other side defending themselves, saying that I want this, I want this organization prescribed. And the court says, well, it looks as if you may have a point. We prescribe. You are prescribed until you now go to the Supreme Court and get it reversed. That is an abuse of power. You know why? Because AIT or Sasu or whoever it is has really done nothing wrong. They just don't like your face and they don't like what you're but, saying. But, but besides liking the face, besides the abuse of power, yeah. also as a lawyer, 
this book, which we call the Constitution, mm -hmm. Section 2, which talks about federalism, has said Nigeria is an indivisible and ind dissolvable entity yes. with 39 states, forcing federalism mm. on the people. And so one of the major problems which we've had is the duplicity of laws where you have the Constitution, which gives you freedom of association yes. and movement, but you also have the Terrorism Prevention Act, yes, where what this automatically does is it removes the blame from government by saying it's abuse of power if the constitution empowers them. And so regardless of what the protests and demonstrations yeah. which we have, don't you think that the fundamental problem comes with our constitutions and no. the National Assembly not being able no, to I, modify this thing? No, no, I don't. I, um, I, I disagree with you. I don't think so at all. The constitution is supreme. There are rights that are fundamental. There, the, the state also has a right to protect all of us from terrorists. So they also need that power. And I'm not for one moment suggesting that the state should not use its power when and if necessary. But let me put this to you. You do all you've done to IMN, you and their leader and his wife. You do all you've done to IPOP and their leader and his family. You've, you've done all that. Why is it that you, you don't apply this massive power that you have to Fulani herdsmen or you don't apply it to other organizations that are involved in armed struggle, that are killing Nigerians, that are butchering us morning, day, and night. And I need to, I, you know, this is something that they need to explain. You ban IPOB, you ban um, IMN, you proscribe them and describe them as terrorists. You go to court and you get a court order under the Terrorism Act. Fair enough. Why is it you can't do the same with the herdsmen? And I feel passionately about this because I said it earlier and I'll say it again. We are here, we're going back to our respective families and so on and so forth. But blood has been spilled. A couple of weeks back, you had a Catholic priest butchered in the streets of Enugu by herdsmen. You had the daughter of the leader of Afeni Fere, and I'm a, I'm a Yoruba person, okay? His daughter butchered in the streets of Owa, in the southwestern region of this country, by herdsmen. You had a situation where just a few couple of weeks ago, a week or so ago, five people were, 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 were abducted, luckily, they kidnapped, um, and they were, they, they, were, they, they were freed a couple of days later, luckily, um, all pastors from the Dean Church. Then, the one that pained me, just as the thousands of others have pained me, just a few days ago, a young pastor on his way to Abuja from Kaduna with his wife and his son, brought out of the car. The pastor was shot in the face, Winners, Winners Chapel pastor, shot in the face, butchered before his wife. They took the wife away. The little boy ran away, and they've demanded 50 million. Again, by herdsmen.